motivation too. Are they ready to sell? Are they ready to get you the paperwork that you're going to need? And there's a lot involved in a short sale. You're doing double the work for probably the same money as a traditional listing on a short sale. That's something to keep in mind. And if you have a homeowner that's not motivated to get you what you need as a listing agent, that's gonna be a tough sale for you guys. It's hard to move somebody along that may not be motivated. Um, so as I said, the auction was an equal to short sale. And then by the time you, you leave, you wanna get at least your basic listing agreement assigned, um, assigned if you have actually determined that they're underwater and they meet these certain parameters. Let's see if I can move this. So the types of short sale. You also at this point, when you go back, you wanna know the type of short sale you're dealing with. So they're underwater. You've determined it's gonna be a short sale. Now you have to figure out what type of short sale you're dealing with. And the reason you need to know the type is because it affects your listing agreement. It affects your contracts. It affects how many days you put it on market. A lot of the government-sponsored enterprises, the GSE programs, the GSE short sales, they have uh, certain guidelines that you have to follow for their short sale program. Some of them have 15 days on the market, five days on the market. Some of them have verbiage that you have to put into the listing agreement. So it's important when you go back to your office that you determine the type of short sale that you're about to list. So we have some of the basic types of short sales that we have in your handout here today. Freddie, Fannie, Federal, USDA, VA, reverse mortgages. These are all different types of short sales. And they all have their own guidelines for listing. They have their own guidelines for what they'll accept for, for an offer. Um, and then you have your non-GSEs or your non-government sponsored enterprises, which there are no guidelines. So that doesn't help you out much other than you'll have to call the servicer, whether it's Bank of America, Chase, a small local lender, DCU, um, Wells Fargo, and find out what, what do you need from me to list this short sale if, it, if it's something that's a portfolio owned short sale. So the way that we determine what type of short sale it is, is there's certain websites that you can look it up, it's in your handout, to find out if it's a you know, Fannie Mae or an FHA back short sale. Who owns the loan? Who backs that short sale? Who's the investor of the loan? And the investor of the loan is the one who usually determines the guidelines for your setup. So when I mean the investor of the loan, let's use Wells Fargo, we'll pick on them today because they're, they're easy to pick on. They're the biggest servicer, they make a lot of mistakes. So, we'll say Wells Fargo is the homeowners uh, who they pay their mortgage to. So, who they pay their mortgage to may not be the investor of the loan. It could be a Wells Fargo um, mortgage that's uh, mortgage that's serviced by Wells Fargo, but Freddie Mac might own the loan. So, you have to find out the Freddie Mac guidelines on how to list that property. So, you want to find out the investor of the loan behind the servicer. Um, Right, yep. And DCU, they, they do sell off their loans, believe it or not. Some they portfolio, some they sell off to a secondary market lender. Uh, Mass Housing works with Fannie Mae all the time. So again, they may be servicing a loan for an investor. Um, the registry holds some awesome information. I'm like a super sleuth at the registry of deeds. I'll go.